Hi, Chad. Come inside. This is my little vestibule. So welcome to Hampton Court. If you look up Hampton Court in an English dictionary, it says a home for the indigent gentry. So I think this does apply slightly. But now what we're going to do is, um, I would like you to, we can just move around and look at all the different shrines because this whole over-decorated apartment is all about um, celebration of the past and, and things that I absolutely love to look at all the time. So as you can see, there's, there's hardly a room, you know, there's hardly room to put anything because they're these kind of tableau and these kind of still life um, assemblages. So, and they all mean something. So we can go around and look at them. But first we're going to have some orange juice because we have to look at the colour in the kitchen. So the idea of this flat is that it's all just about the same thing. I mean, it's all kind of like a sitting room. And um, so we have these lit up cabinets everywhere. These glasses are Austrian tea glasses painted with flowers. So we're all going to have some orange juice. <laughs> I don't know if you can. <laughs> the Constance Spry books. Constance Spry was, I think, the, great, the, the kind of Leonardo da Vinci of, of flower arrangers. She, um, an English woman who had a shop in London in the 1920s and 30s and 40s, and by the time, in uh, 1950s and 60s, she had a flower school, a flower arranging school and a finishing school. And um, she, together with her friend Rosemary Hume, also produced a, a remarkable cookbook. But these images, these flower arrangements, um, are the flower arrangements of all time. Nothing has ever been equal to these. They are the beginning and the end of all flower arrangements. So whatever happens with flowers is just based all on this, on Constance Fry. And so I have several of her books here. And then I've got um, biographies of of English people mostly, um, aristocratic English eccentric people, um, writers like James Lees Milne, and, um, so, and, and lots of biographies of duchesses and princesses. And if you close these doors, you feel as though you're in, again, one of those European palaces, a little cabinet. I do speak a tiny bit of rural Corsa. <laughs> but I have a wonderful, um, how can I say, uh, a relationship with Sipi when we make up words, English and Corsa words, and we just enjoy ourselves. It's fabulous. And this is a recent um, photograph which a friend gave me when I was. Um, given some black velvet Dolce and Gabbana shoes by a friend because they were too big for him. And we were laughing at about, about the fact that they were, they cost the same amount as my car. So, we're going to have some coffee. I have to have some coffee. Strangely enough, I've, I've never really had what I would describe or what I would, you know, from books and I've never had a love affair as such. I mean, I've, maybe I'll still have one, I don't know, 62 or 61 and a half, but um, I don't know, my relationships have been sort of oblique and, and, and sort of unusual. So... Um, I suppose that sounds like a euphemism. It is a euphemism. But um, I have never really had a first love. I, w I was once sort of madly in love with a 
a priest. That was rather hopeless. Um, but anyway, it was a kind of intense time of my life. Not at all. I mean, I'm much more pretentious than my parents. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally pretentious. Um, we weren't English at all. I think it was largely my own kind of fantasy about Englishness that made me more English than I really am. And, but I'm very comfortable with that now because a wonderful thing happened once, um, which put, which I think is, I, I mean, I personally, I think it was a wonderful thing for me in that um, I went to a very big lunch party in Cape Town with a lot of elderly, quite important people at the time and two tables and my hostess was a wonderful woman called Joy Collier who was English and very um, witty and intellectual and a one, she was a writer, a hostess, I mean she was a wonderful woman. I mean, the kind of people you just don't see in Cape Town anymore. And um, she said to me, darling, I haven't seen you for ages. Where have you been? So I said, well, I've been away, Joy. So she said, well, where did you go? So I said, I went to the Eastern Cape to see my parents. And she said, the Eastern Cape? She said, you're not off in Carpets, are you? And I said, well, yes, actually, half off in so the whole room fell silent and she said to me, well then how come you're so frightfully English? And I said, it's all put on. Gradually, thank goodness, the pain of departure over. 